Game over. The Oklahoman youngster is the first person to beat Tetris. It looks like an Oklahoman youngster is the first to beat Tetris. A video that Willie Gibson uploaded to YouTube captures the moment the beloved video game fails when he gets to level 157. The stunned 13-year-old gasps, oh my god. I'm going to pass out. I can't feel my fingers, I can't feel my hands. I'm going to pass out, I'm shaking so bad. The youngster, known on YouTube as Blue Scuti, caused the game to crash in just 38 minutes, a feat that a human has never accomplished. Soviet engineer Alexei Pajitnov invented Tetris in 1984. Players maneuver and arrange falling pieces into full lines that eventually vanish. The falling bricks get faster as the player advances. Level 29, which features the fastest speed in the game, was long thought to be the highest level that could be reached. However, as YouTuber A Game Scout notes in his examination of Willy's accomplishment, level 30 was attained in 2011. Since then, other human players have advanced even further, but up to this point, only AI machines have succeeded in reaching Tetris's actual conclusion. Willie wrote in his YouTube video description, When I started playing this game, I never expected to ever crash the game, or beat it. This run was also the overall score, level, lines, and 19 score world record. Man died after climbing into jet engine at Salt Lake City Airport. At Salt Lake City Airport, a guy who had gotten into the engine of an aircraft was discovered dead. According to authorities, Park City resident Kyler Effinger, 30 years old, broke through an emergency escape door aboard a Delta Airlines flight on Monday. The plane had been sitting on a de-icing pad and its turbines were rotating. He then walked onto the tarmac and climbed inside one of the jet's engines. Effinger, who had a boarding pass to Denver, was pronounced dead at the scene. According to Salt Lake City Police, Effinger was discovered unconscious and removed from the engine intake cowling, which controls airflow to the engine fan, by emergency personnel. A store manager at Utah's biggest airport told the airport control center he saw a passenger pass through an emergency exit just before 10 p.m. Officers hurried to order the pilot to turn off the aircraft's engines after discovering Effinger's clothes, shoes, and other personal belongings on one of the runways. In an attempt to revive the guy, paramedics use naloxone, a drug that may quickly reverse an opioid overdose and restore normal breathing, along with CPR. The cause and method of Effinger's death are still under investigation by the police. According to a Delta representative, the flight, Delta 2348, from Salt Lake City to San Francisco, was cancelled after all passengers safely disembarked. They added, as nothing is more important than the safety and security of our customers and people, Delta is fully cooperating with all aviation authority and law enforcement investigations. Jimmy Kimmel threatened to sue an NFL player over alleged connections to Jeffrey Epstein. Due to rumors that the host's name could be on Jeffrey Epstein's client list, Jimmy Kimmel is planning to sue an American football player. Aaron Rodgers, a quarterback for the New York Jets, said on Pat McAfee's show on Tuesday, there's a lot of people, including Jimmy Kimmel, really hoping that doesn't come out. I'll tell you what, if that list comes out, I definitely will be popping some sort of bottle. The list refers to records of over 170 individuals who were either close friends, acquaintances, or victims of disgraced financier Epstein. The records will be released to the public following a December court decision. The people who were supposed to be identified have 14 days to file an appeal against the judge's ruling, so the information is probably going to leak in early January. Kimmel wrote on X, for the record, I've not met, flown with, visited, or had any contact whatsoever with Epstein, nor will you find my name on any list other than the clearly phony nonsense that soft-brained wackos like yourself can't seem to distinguish from reality. Your reckless words put my family in danger. Keep it up and we will debate the facts further in court. At Aaron Rodgers 12. Since Rodgers' anti-vaccine position caused a stir, Kimmel has called him a tinfoil hatter and made fun of him on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Harvard University president resigns amid anti-Semitism and plagiarism scandal. 
Only a few months into her term, Harvard's first black president, Claudine Gay, announced her resignation in a letter to the university community. She had faced criticism for remarks she had made about anti-Semitism on campus and plagiarism charges. She follows Liz McGill, the president of the University of Pennsylvania, as the second Ivy League president to step down in the past month in response to congressional evidence over anti-Semitism on campuses. When asked if calling for the genocide of Jews would violate the university's code of conduct during a congressional hearing on anti-Semitism, Ms. Gay said that it would depend on the situation and if a speech crosses into conduct that violates our policies. The White House, as well as other Republican and Democratic legislators, criticized her comments, and Saturday Night Live's opening sketch made fun of the hearing. After the hearing, conservative groups closely examined Ms. Gay's academic background, citing many suspected instances of plagiarism in her PhD dissertation from 1997. At first, the Harvard Governing Board supported Ms. Gay, stating that an examination of her academic work had revealed a few instances of inadequate citation, but no proof of scientific misconduct. However, the Harvard Corporation disclosed a few days later that it had discovered two more instances of a duplicative language without appropriate attribution. The board declared that Ms. Gay would revise and ask for changes to her dissertation. In the letter announcing her resignation Ms. Gay said it has been distressing to have doubt cast on my commitments to confronting hate and to upholding scholarly rigor, two bedrock values that are fundamental to who I am, and frightening to be subjected to personal attacks and threats fueled by racial animus. Ms. Gay, who is returning to the school staff, added it, has become clear that it is in the best interests of Harvard for me to resign so that our community can navigate this moment of extraordinary challenge. Alan Garber, provost and chief academic officer, will serve as interim president until Harvard finds a replacement, the Harvard Corporation said in a statement. The pilot who killed a British couple in a helicopter crash had cocaine in his system. According to a study, cocaine was present in the system of the British couple who died in an Australian helicopter crash. On January 2, 2023, Ron Hughes, 65, and his wife Diane, 57, were taking in the scenery close to SeaWorld in Queensland when their helicopter crashed in midair with another. Along with pilot Ashley Jenkinson, 40, and another passenger Vanessa Tadros, 36, from New South Wales, the Cheshire couple also perished at the scene. The Australian Transport Safety Bureau ATSB, has published an initial report a year after the accident, stating that Mr. Jenkinson's toxicology analysis reveals a positive result for cocaine metabolites. Despite this, the research concludes that it was unlikely that the very low concentrations would have affected his ability to fly. According to Chief Commissioner Angus Mitchell, exposure was not likely to have occurred in the 24 hours before the accident, based on the metabolite levels. He added, it is important to note, while this is a substantive and comprehensive interim report, the ATSB is yet to make formal findings as to the contributing factors that led to this accident as we are continuing our analysis of that evidence. Local media reports that while the interim assessment has been welcomed by Mr. Jenkinson's family, they have requested people who knew him to refrain from allowing it to tarnish the memory of the pilot. Additionally, they are recommending that everyone read the whole investigation, which discovered multiple contributing factors to this terrible accident. According to the ATSB inquiry, interference from their life jackets contributed to some of the passengers' seatbelts not being fastened correctly. According to Mr. Mitchell, this was not attributed to the tragic outcomes in this case. Two Eurocopter EC-130 helicopters collided in Madeira during the incident. One had just taken off from a different helipad and the other was approaching land.